Welcome on our webinar, Building Trust in the Cloud, Google Workspace Security and Reliability. Today, we'll dive into how Workspace ensure secure and reliable work environment for modern businesses. Together with our great speakers, uh, today we'll have on stage Dominic, Territory Manager at Google Workspace. Hi, Dominic. Uh, also, we'll have on stage a Customer Engineer at Google Cloud, Victoria Ramowska. Hi, Victoria. Thank you for joining. And uh, we'll have uh, Solution Engineer CloudFresh, Ilya, who will share the demo and some insights about CloudFresh. Uh, Few words about CloudFresh. We are a global Google Cloud, Tendesk, Asana, GitLab, Microsoft, and Okta partners. Uh, for all of our partners' products, we are offering an entire cycle of professional services uh, to support our customers. And uh, for Google Workspace, we also offer a bunch of benefits. Whether you are new or existing Workspace user, you can experience uh, lots of different perks working with us. Uh, here you can see that uh, as for the new Google Workspace user, we guarantee uh, uh, free proof of concept, 30 days free trial, cost optimization, and professional services. And if your business is already using Google Workspace, you can take advantage of some cost savings, licenses optimization, special partner discounts, partial domain licensing, and also, of course, professional services. So as you see, our team are is all set up to provide you with the most successful and cost-effective Google Workspace usage. Uh, many businesses worldwide trust us and working with us to transform their business operation. And today we have a special offer for you. If you're already working with Google Workspace, we're offering a free security audit of your current workspace environment. Uh, so we are here, our tech team are here to help you maximize your Google Workspace usage. And if you're just thinking on transitioning to uh, Google Workspace, we're offering a free Google Workspace security roadmap to facilitate your migration. So please scan the QR code, fill out the quick form, and claim your offer. And uh, you'll hear also more about our security services today. And last but not least, please, please sorry, ask all your questions to the chat. And during the session, at, and at the end of the session, we'll cover it. Our speaker will choose the best two questions, and you'll receive some cool gifts from CloudFresh. So uh, I'm giving the mic to Dominic. Dominic, please, the stage is yours. Amazing. Thank you very much. Um, good to be here. Um, I'm based out of Dublin, so um, it is quite a sunny morning. I'm not sure about the, the rest of um, everyone's locations, but I'm quite happy given the uh, Dublin weather. I can see Victoria looking out the window. Is it still sunny? No. Okay, it's gone. Well, uh, <laughs> it was sunny this morning at least. Amazing. So um, as you can see on the screen, my name is Dominic. I've been at Google for five years. Um, I worked on the ad side of the business, cloud side of the business, and now um, Workspace, which is a part of the cloud um, uh, family here. Um, Right now, I am responsible for the sales process of Google Workspace within all of Central Eastern Europe. Um, so quite a big territory. Um, and together with Victoria, uh, we will run you through some security features within Workspace on today's webinar. Um, and thank you to CloudFresh for, as always, having us on the call and inviting uh, uh, amazing prospects and, and existing customers to the webinar. So. When it comes to um, when it comes to workspace and security, it is truly a topic that's um, you know at top of mind for our products. Um, One hundred and seventy thousand Googlers use workspace every single day to talk to their peers, communicate, to work, and um, to collaborate. So it is very important that the tool is secure, that the tool uh, prevents our company. Um, and therefore our customers' companies from any data leaks, from data breach breaches, from spam, from malware, um, and so on. One thing about Workspace, previously known as G Suite, it was born in the cloud, it is cloud native, and it's never been an offline product. Therefore, it's really important for you to understand that we've, from the beginning, uh, have invested and have been building Workspace to be 
um, a sort of cloud powered tool of, of today's uh, modern workplace. Um, we have been implementing AI products across our whole tech stack for the, the, the longest time. I believe um, if you look at our timeline, you can check that in uh, 2015, our CEO announced that Google will be an AI first company. And all of the AI features that we have across the whole company, preventing um, uh, data breaches, data leaks, they're also implemented within Google Workspace. And they help customers of every day to deal with spam, malware, et cetera. And you'll see that on the other slides. When it comes to the approach, the approach is quite simple. It's trust nothing, detect everything, and protect everyone. We want to make sure that you are fully in control as an admin of Google Workspace of who has access to what, where they can access it from, um, what locations, um, whether they can share things outside of the organization, whether they cannot. And this is really important in keeping your company, your company's data, therefore your customers' data safe and your business set up for success into the future. When it comes to that built-in, it's built-in at every level. So it's built-in at the hardware infrastructure. That security is also built-in at the identity level, the internet level. And how that's done is quite impressive. Not to mention, we're secure by design. Um, so within the actual hardware itself, we implement various different security tactics, but also when it comes to development and the deployment of new products, AI products, products that are being added into the Google Workspace tech stack, we make sure that there's no risky codes, that it's sandboxed. We also make sure that the service live agreement is 99.9%, .9%, meaning Google Workspace will always be up for you, um, no matter what we're doing and what tools we're adding to it. And we obviously imply and comply with all the secure production practices that you can imagine when it comes to deploying new features within Google Workspace. On the latest slide, you also see a bit about the certifications and the compliance frameworks that we have. For a lot of you, this might be really important. Um, we are in Europe, so you might be uh, looking at GDPR, you might be looking at ISO, at SOC 2, um, uh, at HIPAA, if you are a medical institution. Um, so that is to say that by implying and deploying workspace within your company, you automatically bring all of, the, all of those certifications on board. So you never have to worry about your workspace side of things not being compliant with the different frameworks. And I'll show you a whole list of them later on in the uh, presentation. When it comes to the chat, um, in the last three years and in the different study that, studies that we've had, we were not affected at all by the major SolarWinds event. We um, have had zero vulnerability CD over the last three years, and we have absolutely zero evidence of successful phishing attempts made on the uh, accounts enrolled in the advanced protection program here at Google. When it comes to that security with AI, as we mentioned, we block over 15 billion spam messages every single day, reaching our Gmail customers. That is for our private Gmail customers, but also for um, companies. Um, as you may have seen in the previous webinar, we protect 10 million companies using Workspace every single day, including Google. So um, it is quite important that when we say these statistics that we deliver on those and we as a company truly believe and truly have the data to back up that these are um, uh, true data points. As we said, we block 99.9% .9 of all the phishing, malware, spam messages uh, in Gmail every single day. Over 100 million phishing attempts are blocked by Gmail every single day and again, we have 0% of a successful phishing attempt uh, or a break-in for an account that's enrolled in the Google's Advanced Protection Program. Um, uh, when we do share the slides, you can read more about it at the very bottom. It is hyperlinked in the slides, so that's important. When we look at the benefits, first of all, the most important benefit, especially if you are somebody that's responsible for the uh, business CFO side of your business, you can save up to 50% of your overall security budget just on insurance premiums by using Workspace. 
So have a chat with a partner, have a chat with somebody that you can trust um, <clears throat> with a workspace deployment and talk a bit about how it could help you save money. Talk about calculating a return on investment when implementing workspace to your business. There's two times fewer incidents than some of our competitors and two and a half times fewer email security incidents than some of our other competitors. Um, so again, you can read about these studies, but bottom line is when we talk about cybersecurity as Google, um, we take it very seriously, as you can imagine, with a company that um, is all about cybersecurity. And so we also protect you as a business when you deploy workspace within your organization. The most important bit, and I feel like it needs to um, really be said out loud, but there is no ads ever and your data is your data. We do not scan, collect, and or use any of your data within Google Workspace. You can actually specifically exclude Google or foreign governments from having access to any of your data. You are fully in control of your data. You own it. You can delete it at your own discretion. Um, and again, we will never sell that data. We will never look at that data. It does not belong to Google. It belongs to you as a company and to your business. And again, with the service level agreement that we have, your apps will always be accessible. Even when we deploy new features, new tools, we aim for 0% downtime with Google Workspace. And I can personally say, after the six, five and six years of working at Google, I've never seen Workspace be down. Not for me, not for the business. So um, we truly stick to that, that rule. And again, when we talk about security and compliance, just bringing that to the forefront, be mindful of this. Um, compliance should be at top of your mind every single day. I believe that you um, as a business have the responsibility to be GDPR compliant, to be ISO, to be SOC compliant. It has never been easier to get compliance. There's various different tools out there that could help you achieve compliance readiness, but you can rest easy knowing that Google Workspace comes with all the different um, certifications and you can rest easy knowing that there's plenty more of them. And if you want to uh, maybe take a look for what's relevant for you, a lot of these are global. Some are very much a uh, US focused, but nonetheless, we also have the um, Europe, Middle East and Africa certifications that a lot of you probably recognize. Um, and as we said, GDPR being the main sort of most important forefront of these um, of these certifications. Engineering matters. Um, and I believe we've shown on the previous slide or the previous couple of slides how we deploy, how we keep our systems secure and how we develop on our systems. But you need to realize that we have whole teams of SREs with the best world-renowned practices, um, with signals from over 3 billion users. Um, and those SREs are responsible for keeping workspace up and for keeping workspace secure and for testing on workspace, making sure that there's no black swan lights out events. Lastly, we continue to make improvements and continue to make investments. We oftentimes compare periods of two years when we look at 2020 and 2019 and then when we compare that to 2021 and 2022 there's actually been 50 percent fewer global service availability incidents and 75 percent fewer multi-product service availability incidents when it comes to the medium monthly downtime for a commercial user of using workspace in 2022 it was two minutes and 45 seconds and that's a median collective meaning you wouldn't be able to um, even notice workspace being down um, as, as a workspace user, as a professional or commercial workspace user um, every single day. And lastly, all of this sits on Google's own network um, that is maintained, uh, built out, and um, scaled out by Google ourselves. Um, and as you can see, we have various different regions, various different data centers across the globe connecting um, and um, keeping your business and keeping workspace reliable across the globe. With that being said, thank you very much. I believe I'm right on time. Um, if you have any questions, pop them in the comments, and I will pass you over to Victoria, who will show you some 
um, really good live examples of uses of workspace today. Thank you. Cool. Thank you so much, Dominic. Uh, it was very insightful. And as um, Dominic said, uh, I'm and also Anastasia. So my name is Victoria. I'm a customer engineer working at Google Cloud, but I'm covering both uh, Google Workspace and Google Cloud products. So I've been here for a little bit over a year, I think. At some point, I just lost count. Um, but yeah, I'm supporting customers across the entire EMEA region. So it's also Central European, uh, Central and Eastern Europe, like Dominic, but other regions like, I don't know, UK, France, MENA. So this is also a quite big territory. Um, but to jump in kind of into the presentation demo, as Dominic said, I also always like to make it a bit more practical. Don't really talk about features, just we can do A, B, and C. Um, because I think that the real power can be shown through a real life example, let's say. So we're going to go today uh, with Symbol Shops, our imagining company, and we're going to go through a day in the life of the user and also day in the life of an admin. So uh, for a bit of context, Symbol is a global retail company and they are using Google Workspace, okay? Um, so this is Megan. Megan just started as marketing project manager at Symbol and it's her first day. She's super excited to get started. But, you know, will it be easy for her to set up? Will, be, will she be able to use everything as she would want? We'll see that now. So she obviously got her laptop before, um, a day or two before starting. She logs into her Workspace account and sets up her security key. For a bit of context, I also have one you probably cannot see, uh, but I always have it in my laptop. If I want to access some sensitive information, I need to have it. Um, so this is just additional layer of security. And all she does, she taps it to start her day. And because with Google Workspace, she can get up and running in like seconds, I would even say. She doesn't need to go to IT desk to get help with the setup of the laptop. Everything is ready, her identity is set up. She only needs that security key to get started. So the first thing she would do, as a lot of people would do when they open their laptop in the morning, she opens Gmail. So she's excited to see some um, meeting invitations and she also has a I know it's a bit small, but she has there an, a welcome message from her manager, whose name is Pri. And Pri lets Megan know that she's been added to a few team spaces in Google Chat, um, so she can quickly get to know her teammates, including simple announcements, um, where leadership can share important news with the organization. And then Pri introduces her first project, um, the relaunch of the Symbol website. And her new team has been working on the relaunch for the past few months. So Pri tells her to keep an eye on the project onboarding meeting. And as you can see on the animation, there is a smart reply that kind of shows her so suggested answers that she don't have to, you know, type it all herself if you want to, for example, acknowledge something. It's super useful. I use it. Um, sometimes I feel bad that I just reply with um, in chat to my colleagues with generated message, but they're very good. So it sounds like something I would say, and it really detects the context as well. So for example, someone sends me a message, oh, I booked us a meeting for this and this day. And one of the suggestions at the bottom can be thank you, uh, which is something I would reply. So it actually saves you a lot of time, but to keep going with Megan Day. So she sees the project meeting invite that Pre mentions and she can click view it in the calendar. What's gonna happen? Um, it's gonna send her to the calendar app. She can read through the meeting details and find, find the link to the project plan as well, which was as, um, associated with the invite. Um, and then she can open the document, as you can see, and start to discover the benefits on Smart Canvas. Smart Canvas are those little cheap chips um, that you can assign, like, 
whenever you have a list of projects, you can assign, for example, uh, a person who's responsible for the task. You can uh, assign a document, which is a separate document that should be included. You can put dates, drop down menus. It's super useful, um, especially if you're collaborating with the team. Um, and the plan of the project is clean. So, you know, pages format, and it also includes automated summary. So she can quickly get up to speed on what's been going on as the project was going on for a bit. Um, and then the trim tracks uh, tasks with the people chips in the table, as I mentioned. So it's super simple to assign responsibilities. Um, and by using Smart Canvas, the team has pulled in um, all the relevant project information. So you can see there in the table, I know it's quite quick, but they have a person, they have a date, they also have different documents that are relevant to the project all in one place in a very clean format. Um, so it's giving Megan all the relevant information that she needs. So it's time for the meeting um, that was scheduled. She's joining the video meeting directly from the project plan doc, which is super cool because you can see it the document and the meeting at the same time. I personally like to have two screens, but if you don't have one, this is super handy just to keep like a connection with people you're talking to. Um, and it's super seamless experience. Um, she notices that the team joined the, um, some people joined from mobile devices and it's okay. Some from laptops, it's okay. Some from the meeting rooms, it's all seamless. And those in the conference room um, has actually used companion mode, which is super nice too. So they can fully participate in the meeting chat, the Q and A's, the polls and the personal device uh, from the personal device. And in the room, they also have Google Meet hardware, which, um, which supports adaptive framing. So whoever speaks, um, it's gonna move to that person, which is really cool. Uh, I really enjoyed it during meetings, especially if there's a big team in the room. But moving forward, so they move on to review the project timeline and pre-assigns Megan her first, ta first tasks um, to partner with the agency on the website test plan and to share the uh, test accounts. So she uses the mansion that I, the, the chip with the person's name, which I talked about before for Megan um, and the project plan with like, to give to give her like accountability let's say and she can go back to the document and see clearly what she has to work on which is super cool and then after the meeting a pre adds megan to the project space um with the agency that she has to collaborate with so that she can um do it in real time and access all the files and background materials in one place um the agency welcomes her with the custom emojis and Bruce from the agency lets Megan know that they're still waiting on the list of test accounts um, that they required. So now it's kind of more into security. I was talking a bit more in the background. So Megan adds the file to the space, but there is a sensitive data in the file. So she's actually getting the real time alert, protecting the information from being shared outside of the company. Could it be on purpose? Could it be accidental? It's there. She opens the file. She removes the sensitive information that she cannot share with the agency. And then when she tries again, she'll be able to upload the document there. Um, and then later in the day, they share some Excel spreadsheet in the project space um, with a list of test cases for Megan to review. And with Workspace, it's easy. She can open this file. It doesn't have to be Google Sheets. Uh, she can open in different formats and start filling it in as it was in sheets. Um, and that's it from Megan. It wasn't that much security on her side, but it was very exciting uh, first day. It was super seamless with the marketing project and she could join the spaces and collaborate with her colleagues like on day one. Uh, but we're going to move on now to Amit. So. Amit is our IT administrator. He's the magician behind Megan being able to set everything up so quickly because he has to prepare it for her. Um, so we're gonna walk through a little bit of the tasks that he can be doing. So 
as you can see on the slide, his goals say um, so there are the legal compliance and reliability. So that's something that Dominic was talking about before, for example, being aligned with certification, that be GDPR or others, um, set up an access management and security as well. So to set up a new account for Megan, Amit simply, simply logs in into the admin console. To set her up, it's super few steps. Um, in the company previous systems, admin had to visit multiple consoles and each required different actions, but with Workspace, he can do it all in one place, which just makes it such a nicer experience for him. Uh, then the marketing team uses actually a third party tool for some workloads and project management uh, that includes Asana. But with Workspace, it's super easy for Amit to provision and deploy Asana alongside with all the other apps that Megan will need in just a few clicks. And then, <clears throat> excuse me. Symbol also decided to deploy Beyond Core Enterprise as part of their transition to Workspace. So before Google Workspace and Beyond Core, Amit had to set up a VPN access for every new employee, this, you know, installing client software, creating additional accounts, separate systems, all very complex. That was just one of many, many tasks that he has to manage with others, including, you know, weekly security patches across multiple systems, which could be quite challenging. But with Workspace, again, he can do it all in one place. And with such complexity, users were often frustrated and confused, like they would turn to shadow IT solutions just to get their job done. And this is not the approach we want in the company. So with Workspace, Amit is able to make security and compliance like without friction for his users and for himself as well, it's easier to manage. Um, so he can set up here on, that's what he's doing on the animation. He can set up a context aware access and a BYOD, uh, which is bring your own device. So Megan can securely work from home, from office or anywhere else, even from her own laptop and mobile devices, um, no VPN required. And from day one, Megan has access to all the systems she needs to do her job. Um, one of the things that allows this as well, it's that little security key that I showed you before. It's an additional identity verification, let's say. If you logged in from a different IP suddenly, or you logged in somewhere you haven't logged in in a long time to a system, it's gonna ask you to confirm your other identity there. So with Megan set up in minutes, Amin, uh, Amit can focus on different priorities. So he can also see a proactive notifications in his Gmail about any suspicious login behaviors that happen in the entire symbol organization. So he can trick to, uh, click through to the Workspace Security Center and to check it out. He can review the activity and identify any anomalies and suspend the user, all right? And then the Workspace Security Center provides a unified view of entire symbol security posture and settings, um, and also a proactive notifications for suspicious activities, as we saw in his email on the previous slide. Um, things like compromised devices, leaked passwords, and more. Um, and again, everything in one place. I cannot stress that enough. It makes admin's life much easier. Um, he doesn't have to change in between different uh, like interfaces. He can manage all of this from one place. And we cannot, over the last few months, we cannot really have a presentation and not talk about generative AI because it's everywhere and everyone talks about it. So before I pass to Lily, I wanted to make a super quick stop. Um, literally two weeks ago, I think, the yeah, 9th of April, yeah, it would be two weeks ago. We actually announced a launching of two new um, generative AI add-ons for Google Workspace. So previously we had Gemini Enterprise and Gemini Business, but we also added the 
AI meetings and messaging. And the one I want to focus on for like 30 seconds is the AI security. Um, so it offers customers more choice when it comes to their generative AI investments. And why I want to highlight it, because it kind of connects also to what Dominic was saying before. We are an AI first company and it's not only in, you know, dev developing models or I don't know, generation of content. We're also expanding it to security um, because it's a big focus top of mind for everyone. So as an example, um, we're adding an AI, AI classification of the files, which actually leverages the large language models to understand those sensitive words. I don't know if you remember when Megan tried to upload the file, it detected that sensitive information. It works kind of similar. Um, it's a little bit different background in this example, but it would be the same. The model would scan the text, would detect the sensitive word, and then it could automatically get classified based on your settings and rules that you have in place. Um, so it's just showing the power of, you know, artificial intelligence and secu security going together and helping your organization to stay safe, uh, which I think is very, very important. And with this, I also think I'm on time, which I'm very proud of. Uh, I'm gonna pass over to Ilya. Thanks. Thank you, Victoria. That was that was pretty interesting about all this life steps in the life of the admins and the users as well. Yeah, so uh, my name is Ilya and I'm a cloud solutions engineer at CloudFresh here. Yeah, so we support uh, our customers and their businesses yeah, almost all around the world. But yeah, we have focused regions like EMEA, for example. And I do the implementations, migrations, the services for the customers. We are uh, having a fun conversations usually yeah, about their current workflow and uh, all that things yeah, for business to transform into the modern digital companies. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to show you today um, an investigation tool, and I want to tell you why I'm going to show it to you. So uh, as Victoria said, uh, Google Workspace and showed, yeah, has many, many different security features yeah, for administrators, for the owners, yeah, so for all, uh, for, for all responsible people. Yeah, in their organization and so and i want to uh, open this like a small window into the world of security and cool workspace and show you one of the features uh, lively yeah we will click the buttons we will check out how it works and how it looks like yeah so mm, i will share my screen and we will check out what is that uh, basically yeah so the google workspace security center yeah which provides a unified view uh, for all of your security and it has like different layers of um, of tools yeah so let me quickly reshare the screen please all right i hope you see this yeah yep fine uh, so that's that's how uh, the main kind of main menu uh, in Google Workspace and console looks like. Yeah? So we have our alerts about the security. We have some basic buttons to like add new users, etc. But we are interested in the uh, security button. Yeah. So we have our security and security center, and we see we have three tools in our security center. So we will start from the dashboard yeah and as victoria said we have uh, everything uh, about our company security in the one single place yeah and we can control everything monitor the suspicious activity etc uh, i will show you an example today yeah like for example i am as administrator uh, want to check out uh, which files were shared externally in my organization. Yeah, I just want to audit um, the behavior of my users. Yeah, and how they share files. Uh, 
I have a dashboard yeah, with shares, uh, like it's, it's many of them here. Yeah, For example, user login attempts, which failed, message deliveredness, some encryption, spam, etc. But I want to check out how the shares looks like. I'm viewing the report, yeah, and you can see, for example, that uh, external shares, which are 22, yeah, for um, over last time, yeah, and I see that the March 1st, I have 10 external shares, which is pretty suspicious, yeah, if we are looking on the chart for the organizations I have right now. Yeah, because it's like the one day shares, that's pretty strange for, for me, yeah, from my point of view. And I see that I have two files here. So what, what we have, yeah, basically, uh, we want to, have a clear view on our security yeah which i have right now so i'm just viewing on the chart and all of my events here second one if i found something suspicious i want to dig deeper in this uh suspicious activity yeah and i want to do something with that yeah so i want to react yeah as an administrator so i'm clicking on uh investigate this yeah new investigation and so the investigation tool opens so this is the second tool of our three tools in security center and you can see that the, the investigation tool basically is the log constructor kind of yeah and we have our dates yeah from our chart like from uh, the first to the second uh, of march we have our visibility uh, action so the visibility changed to external shared yeah and our document id here which is important yeah so that's what we found here mm, i'm gonna select all of these log records and now i am as an administrator want uh, to do something with that yeah i want to audit uh, this file yeah and with whom this file was shared so i click on the actions audit file permissions yeah, so you, you see that we have many options like, for example, disable download or print or copy, yeah, or remove somebody. But I want to right now ju just check out what happens with this file. Audit file permissions, yeah, and I see that it's many users actually in these files. And this accounts like uh, with almost the same uh, names looks pretty suspicious for me, yeah. And I don't want to for this file because it's pretty sensitive to be shared with these people. So, and I am as an administrator don't need to, to you know, chat to user or email him or call and say please remove the accesses. Like, I don't need to actually even suspend the user, yeah, to get into his account, for example, and remove the accesses, yeah. So it's like the urgent situation, and I want to quickly react. So I'm as an administrator, click on the people, for example, for this file. Yeah, and first of all, I want to uh, switch the accesses, yeah, for like this account, this account, this account, yeah. Um, I can click on this guy, this guy, and this guy, and click set accesses, yeah. And I want them to not see this file yeah just remove the access click apply yeah and changes added to queue yeah save yeah and drive action in progress yeah so i can see that this action right now in the progress and i need like the few seconds to this to be finished yeah so item permissions have been changed now i want this file i want to monitor this file and don't want to things happen once again yeah i want to create an activity rule based on my investigation yeah so i click on create activity rule rule details let's say external share of sensitive information Yep, I can add some description, yeah, scope. So I click next and I see my main events. Yeah, so uh, 
document ID, my uh, view event, and the visibility change. Yeah, so I want the visibility change to have, yeah, for example, external. And now I can click next, add the action, preview my rule, yeah, and set the threshold up. Yeah, so for example, I would say that file will be checked every 24 hours or every hour. Yeah, I, I want like every hour. And when count is more than, let's say two. Yeah, so if the file will be shared externally with more than two people yeah, or the incident. Yeah, so the sharing will be two times, for example. Yeah, in the same day, uh, in an hour. Yeah, and I want to get an alert in the security center, it's uh, high severity and send an alert for all of my administrators or for a responsible admin. Yeah, I click on the review uh, and create the rule. So it's active rule right now. So what we had from this process, yeah, we are prepared for the same situation. Yeah, and for example, before, uh the things happens will be informed yeah so uh we can do some actions for example suspend the user get into investigation tool yeah check out what happened and the main idea is that we do not interrupt any work of the user yeah if like it was some mistake or something yeah we just remove the shares and maybe after this on daily meeting i will tell the user that please be careful with that uh, so that the experience is seamless yeah we do not interrupt the work but we do our job as a security a responsible person or as an administrator etc etc yeah so that's basically how it looks like and let me please get back to the slides and we will talk a bit about our uh, professional services. So, because we are as in CloudFresh have uh, an experienced team in such in such work, yeah, uh, in the scope of work, yeah, in the security, and uh, all of the companies wants to have first of all a hybrid uh, environment, yeah, like not all of the companies, but it's the mainstream, yeah, it's it's super cool and efficient for the companies, yeah. So mobile device management in Google Workspace, which is pretty advanced, uh, has such an options for you, yeah, as Victoria already shown with the Megan example. Yeah, so we provide a trainings for the admins. We configure all of the features uh, inside the mobile device management, like context aware access, uh, I don't know, corporate device enrollment, etc. So we provide an experience for the companies and we provide a, a, a good workflow yeah, and secure workflow for their employees and for the whole company to work uh, with the best uh, efficiency. Yeah. So next one, we have advanced data protection uh, package, yeah, which also includes the, like training, uh, data loss prevention, rules configuration, uh, all of the policies for the like organization-wide policies for the sharing, uh, alerts, uh, settings for security, examples for audit events and rules uh, I shown before yeah, and all the things. So what do we have in the end? So I will I will sum up. Um, so you will have a, a audit yeah, for your current process. You will have a roadmap for the changing this process for transforming this process for the best performance yeah from the security perspective uh, and from the efficiency perspective for, yeah so the users also should work in comfort uh, yeah and you will have centralized control uh, you will have security features yeah will be configured for you uh, personally yeah so access which will be granulated and all of the other things including the third party things you have in the company yeah because all of the companies have third party tools yeah it's also will be secured and so that's basically all from my side thank you all for the attention and i'm giving the microphone to anastasia
Thank you so much, Ilya. Let me share the slides. We have lots of questions in the Q&A and the comments. So I'd like just to remind you about our offers. So please scan the QR code, request a security audit or Google Workspace security roadmap. And um, uh, let's go to our Q&A session. So let's start maybe from the fresh questions about your demo, Ilya, that we have from Andre and Michal. So the first one would be from Andre. A user have a message, something like email from domain is not accepted due to domain's DMARC policy. In which log I can get more information about the event? Mm -hmm. yeah, so let me let me please read the question once again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, first of all, uh, yeah, it depends on your plan. You can get such a information about the uh, DMARC policy, about the, yes, you know, the log itself, yeah, with all of detailed information in the email original, yeah, so in the header. And you can get this information from the Google Workspace Admin Console, yeah, in the most advanced uh, plans of Google Workspace. Yeah, so you are as an administrator, don't need to ask your users to send you such an original of email, etc. You can just check it out by yourself, yeah, easily. And if you need some help in this case, yeah, you always can ask uh, uh, the CloudFresh, yeah, to help you in the cases, yeah, connected with the security and other things in your organization. Yeah, I hope I hope that's clear. Thanks, Ilya. Uh, we have also a few questions in the Q&A and in, in the comments from Michal. Let's start from the first ones. So the first question was how we can manage workstation being used to log into companies Google Workspace. Can we allow only trust devices? Uh, uh, and Michal is talking about endpoint, which are not mobile devices. So please, uh, who who is ready to cover this question i will copy this to the comments as well so you can see it uh, so yeah let me check it out yeah yeah so as i said before the google workspace has uh, advanced mdm and and so mobile device and endpoint management yeah so with uh, simple installation of endpoint management extension in your workspace uh, google, google chrome browser or if it's android device for example it's much easier it's all built in uh, usually yeah you can manage the workstations being used to log into companies google workspace yeah and for sure, you can allow only trusted devices uh, yeah, in your company. Many things uh, are uh, aimed to get such a result in Google Workspace, especially the corporate inventory, the enrollment policy, et cetera, et cetera. So if the new employee comes to the company, yeah, first of all, you need to confirm uh, his device in the organization. Yeah, but it could be done automatically based on some uh, rules. Yeah, so to sum it up, uh, yeah, if you need help, we are here for this. And I um, also have, sorry, Anastasia, just quickly, I see, see the questions from Michal, uh, two last questions, yeah, so about the rules, and yeah, this rule will be, will be valid only for this one specific file, right? Yeah, nope, uh, depends on the, on your configuration yeah in in my configuration i had an id of this file yeah so it will be applied only for this file but it could be done for like uh, whole company yeah for all of the files um, based on the uh, event you yeah, know for example file shared externally rule triggered you have an alert so that works like that maybe thank maybe, you yeah. 
Thank you, Ilya. And uh, in the Q&A, we also have a question from Michal. Is it possible to schedule a session in terms of more advanced in security configurations in Google Workspace? For example, context of access, DLP rules, and other features. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, Michal, I'd like to tell you to mention that uh, our team will get uh, to shortly after the webinar, and you can schedule a meeting with our tech expert, with Ilya, for example, or with someone else. Uh, we have lots of different questions from Anira, so some of them were answered by Victoria in the chat directly. Thanks, Victoria. Uh, Anira, I'd like to tell you that um, uh, I see that you're interested in Google for Education tools, Google for Education efficiency. So as a Google for Education partner, I also invite you to schedule a meeting, a consultation with our Google for Education experts, so you can get all of your questions about Google Classroom and other answers. And here I'd like just to cover the security questions because we have lots of them. So from Anira, what security measures are in place in Google Workspace to protect data privacy? I saw Dominic already covered it in his slides. Dominic, can you sum it up, please? or Victoria, as you wish. So once again, the question is what security measures are in place in Google Workspace to protect data privacy? Yeah, I can take this one. <clears throat> I would assume, I'm gonna make a small assumption here, uh, that it's more from the user side, like the company, what you can do, or from the workspace side, like from Google, what we are doing. So for from Google side, we are, you know, the security is built in. We take it very seriously. The data is yours. We don't access the data. We cannot use it from, for example, we get that question sometimes if we use customers' data for AI training. And no, we do not. The data is yours. We don't have access to this. But also, as Dominic mentioned, we are complying with a lot of certifications, uh, such as um, ISO 27001 or SOC 2 or GDPR. Um, I can pop in the link now quickly because I actually use it often, so I remember. Um, so here there is a list on our website of different kind of compliance offering. What it means that our products are certified with those um, compliance requirements, but it doesn't mean that it automatically makes your environment compliant. You still have to put rules in place. And that's the second part to my answer. Um, you can set up rules to protect your data, data classification, data loss prevention. You can put retention in place. Um, also phishing and spam, all of this um, good stuff that Ilya was also talking about. So. It's a much longer answer. I could be going on for ages, but I know we have more questions, but I think that sums it up more or less. Thanks. Thanks, Victoria. We'll wait for a new uh, answer if it's clear for her. And um, next question from Andrew. Can I configure Google Workspace immediately for two-factor authentication with Google Authenticator when creating a new user? Um, I think I can answer this question. Yeah, so um, for sure, you can configure your organization uh, to be compliant with this policy. Yeah, so uh, on the organization level, you can set up the feature to be turned on yeah, for the users, and they will be required to use the two-step uh, to factor authentication before to log in uh, into the organization corporate account. Yeah, sure. And you can use Google Authenticator application for this as well. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Ilya. And the second question from Andrew, we have um, three or four of them. Uh, data loss prevention, prevention for mail and disk and the messages is in different places. Why does it? organized like this? 
maybe Victoria, that's a question for you. Uh, sure, where is this question? Oh yeah, I see it, I see it, it's fine. I run this. I don't know exactly what you mean. I would assume it's the um, it's the alerts that you see separately in the console, um, which when you think about it, it makes sense to separate the alerts from email and from the Google Drive uh, or in messages, because you might, for example, have different policies for those. Because whenever you put um, DLP policies, like when you create the rules, you actually can um, there are three options as far as I remember. Yeah, you go Gmail, Google Drive, and Google Chat, I think, just from top of my mind, how it looks on the screen. Um, and what you can do, actually, you can have different requirements for all three of them. So you may have a different rule for Gmail, that different action is going to happen. You can have a different action for Google Drive, and you can have a different action for a chat. So by action, I mean send a notification to admin block sharing externally and all those other feet like other options you can go for um so i think and this is just my opinion because i i assume that's what you're talking about i think it just designed this way so it's clear to monitor different um behaviors based on those the separation um i don't know if that answers the question Andrew, please give us a sign if uh, your question is answered. And we're, um, uh, we're going to another question also from Andre. Uh, an organization doesn't have Active Directory and wants to set up Windows machine login using uh, Google Cloud. What is the best way to arrange this and what are the pitfalls? I don't know if there are pitfalls as such. Uh, it can be done, as you mentioned, that's the Google credentials provider for Windows, I think. Uh, I think that's the acronym you mentioned there, and that can 100% be done. Um, and it doesn't have to be an AD, because AD is an identity provider that comes from Microsoft site. Like, I assume you mean Azure AD, because it's Windows. Um, but you can actually use Cloud Identity, which is our um, identity provider. And with the Google Credential Pro Driver Microsoft, when you install the client, it's going to work the same way as you would have a third party identity provider. So I don't see any pitfalls um, that would be there. I think it's just a personal preference from the organization what makes more sense to do. Um, and what is the best way to arrange it? I would just say uh, follow the steps um, by installing the client on the devices, and then there should be no issues. Uh, but you can always reach out if there are some more specific questions, like Anastasia and Ilya were saying, to schedule a call and ask them in more detail. Thanks, thanks, Victoria. Let's cover two more questions. We have a question from Maxim. As a benefit for end user protection, can you please present from Enterprise Premium. So um, can we briefly tell Maxim about from Enterprise Premium, if we can? Uh, I, will, I will say just a few words about that, because um, the Google Workspace Chrome Enterprise Premium, so it's kind of custom built of your Chrome browser, yeah, so it's corporate managed, yeah, organization managed, and you can set up many, many different policies yeah to be compliant with your organization uh policies yeah for example we require like 24 digits password we require from user to uh, to have like the three needed tabs to be pinned uh, we require for users um to let's say uh, to always have like camera to be available in Google Meet, yeah, just for the technical reasons. And many, many, many different policies. It's like almost thousands of the policies uh, for the users in Chrome Enterprise builds. Yeah, so that's 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 possible. Yeah. And you have 
an additional layer of protection yeah so because it's more configurable and you will get closer to your uh, compliance in the company yeah so i, I hope that's answered uh, on your question let me know thanks Ilya. and let's uh, choose the last question uh the last question uh, let's choose the one from uh, uh, Yaroslav, what the plan a security option appears in? I don't see them in my console, maybe too low plan. Yeah, so it depends on your plan, yeah, for sure. And some advanced features uh, are appeared in higher plans, yeah. Some of them are uh, possible in like the basic plans as well. Yeah, so because Google at all wants want all the companies here yeah, to have the same basic level of the security and they do yeah but for for example bigger companies for enterprises yeah they need some more specific advanced uh, security features yeah and could cool provide them in the more advanced and higher tariff plans yeah for sure that's that that's how it works basically maybe, maybe guys you have something to add if no yeah Thanks. I see there are other questions. We noted it and uh, we'll get in touch with you. We'll answer it. Uh, Ilya will get in touch with you if you need to schedule a meeting. We're ready to answer all your questions on a meeting directly, personally with Ilya or other experts. So let's wrap it up and let's choose. Uh, we need to choose two the most interesting questions. So Dominic, Victoria, what questions were the most interesting for you today? you can see it in the comments also there are plenty of questions in the q a yeah i'm trying to filter through them there's a lot in the meantime i want to ask you to fill out a quick question about this webinar uh, there is only four questions not all of them are some of them are optional so please if you have uh, one minute uh, tell us your thoughts and it will help us to improve our next events so victoria i do think you know? i really like the one that Miha asked about the workspace workstations being used to log into companies google workspace um, it pops up quite quickly with our customers. Um, that's the one that was in Q&A and you pasted it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And Ilya, can you choose another one? Sure, Please. sure. But that's exactly what I wanted to choose as well. Um, all right. Give me a few seconds. Um, so, Michal, I will write to you to ask for your information to deliver the branded gifts from Cloudfresh. Thanks for your engagement. And let's choose the other one. And uh... I think the question about the Chrome Enterprise, let me just find it. Chrome Maxim? Yeah, Chrome Enterprise yeah. Premium? Yep, exactly. Yeah, Maxim Chapel, sure. Okay, great. Uh, Maxim, I will write to you. Uh, and uh, you will also receive some branded gifts from gifts from Cloudfresh. Thanks for your engagement. We had lots of questions. I'd like to see our speakers. Firstly, Ilya, Victoria, Dominic, thank you. And of course, all the people who join us. Uh, and I hope you get most of your questions answered. If not, we are ready to answer it on our meetings. I wish you all the best and a great day ahead. So thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you all.